the 135 millimeter f3.5 Canon is a um, rangefinder coupled lens um, that was made for the Canon Model 7 range of cameras, which which were basically copies of Leica 3 cameras. Um, it's really well made and started, uh, well, was introduced in 1952, lasted for about 23 years with the same optical formula. There are different versions, but um, it's well built, quite heavy at around 425 grams. Has got a really long focus throw, uh, which can be good or bad, depending on what you use it for. And this the aperture ring is quite robust, let's say. It's not, not exactly the same feeling as an equivalent Leica lens, uh, of course. Uh, it was the Leica thread mount, this M39 mount, so I put an adapter to have it compatible with um, Leica M series cameras. And yeah, it's got a really, it's supposed to have a really soft bokeh, um, really interesting rendering, uh, kind of old school. So let's go look at the different examples uh, I've taken uh, using a digital camera. Okay, so let's go to a few examples of this lens. Um, during a trip to Iceland, uh, I, I used it with uh, my usual camera for these kinds of tests, which is the Leica SL2. It's a, it's a 47 megapixel sensor, um, but it also has a, a micro prism array on top of it, which is supposed to to help render better the old optics uh, that you could find for Leica cameras, whereas the, the light uh, is going to arrive at a really stronger angle on the, on the sensor. So it's really optimized for old lenses, and that's an old lens. So all examples here are going to be with uh, the maximum aperture at 3.5. Um, and on those two uh, first pictures, we see the precision of the image and and how warm the rendering is it's it's a low contrast situation sort of low contrast because you still have the the sun uh, back at the horizon but still uh, you see the overall characteristic of, of this lens uh, on those two images with with this this bokeh very soft bokeh on the left picture on the foreground and the background and even at uh, further distances, like on the horizon line on the right picture, you really have lots of detail. Um, here, a good example of this very soft bokeh, um, non-disturbing, qu quite neutral, but yeah, and the very warm rendering of colors um, by this lens. Uh, also, we can start seeing that it's very precise geometrically speaking the vertical and horizontal lines are are great um, yeah again with those two pictures um, looking at lines that's uh, in the city of Reykjavik uh, as that before it was near the city's airport um, here we have a great example of um, how good the geometry is um, and this really smooth soft bokeh um, as for many of those lenses of that era, um, the rendering is quite natural. It's organic, and that's real. Those two pictures are really a good example, a good illustration of the organic um, results you can have with this lens. Quite a surprise, actually, to me. I had never tried it before. And, uh, again, I'm going to slowly have lower lit situations. Um, here, it's uh, Reykjavik Bay. Um, one problem that may arise is that the maximum aperture is 3.5, but actually uh, with a good sensor like this one, which is pretty uh, good at low lights, uh, um, it's interesting. And we still see that the, the rendering from this lens is precise, it's, the colors are warm, um, the bokeh feels natural, it's soft. On the picture on the left, you can see those really small uh, lights, which are cars uh, driving on the road, on the main road. Um, it's precise. There's no real artifact. It's kind of a neutral look, but of that time. And on the right picture, you can see the, the bokeh on the foreground, how well it's rendered, and how the details on the moon and the warmth of the moon uh, is 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 here, is uh, is rendered as well. Um, those two pictures, a good example by day and by night of this geometrical um, respect. Um, and also of um, 
how layers the depths of your scene, even so it's a hundred, it's a 3.5 uh, aperture, uh, maximum aperture. Uh, the, the mix of geometrical precision and, and the soft bokeh makes it, makes really your, your image pop out um, uh, on both of those. I think it's, it's quite uh, apparent. Um, and also one thing that we can see on the right picture is uh, the hollow, the, the halo, sorry, uh, on the bulbs, on the light bulbs. It's well contained, uh, very neutral, very natural, uh, as well as the, as the lights. You have this uh, room on the top right of the right picture, which has colder uh, lights. Uh, it's it's good on on many on many levels. Um, this lens is really an interesting, it's just interesting uh, lens. Uh, probably why it it stayed so long in in production. On the left, that's that's nighttime. Um, a good example of the the halo on highlights. Um, how well it's it's kept controlled, and how even in in those cold color settings. Um, Every, well, the, the colors are quite warm, the rendering, the precision is good, and yeah, very, very controlled uh, kind of lens. And as I was uh, in Reykjavik during the Iceland Airwaves Festival, which is probably one of the best um, uh, anywhere, uh, it, it's all around the city in many different, um, in many different concert halls or cafes, or even outside, and very different styles of music, and so it's it's pretty a pretty good opportunity to test the, the this lens. On the right, that's a, a group, a duo named Cyber uh, at the Pricket Bar. So uh, it's a good example of high contrast. Um, and this halo I was talking about, the the backlight uh, really comes out strong, but still the halo being very well controlled and follows. Uh, the overall image construction, it works, and the lights are good. Uh, the colors uh, render well. Uh, a good mix of warmth and and coldness, and this again, this this um, this really nice bouquet. Uh, we'll see more of this uh, later. Um, now going to darker situations. Um, this three point five aperture, even so. This camera was pretty sensitive. The the, the sensor is, is pretty good at high ISOs. Uh, that's probably a good um, that's a good illustration of why uh, improvements in the ISO sensitivity still matters. Uh, I mean, we could all use very open lenses, but it's not the same results. So, having very high ISO sensors uh, able to manage. Uh, uh, s smaller um, apertures uh, uh, makes it interesting. Uh, on the left picture, even so, I have a stabili uh, you know, the internal body image stabilization. Uh, it still doesn't compensate for the movement of your subject. So the image is, I'm actually, my camera stays steady, but uh, it needs more light. So it's going to be a, a long exposure time and, and you will have uh, synthetic, kinetic artifacts. Um, on the left, that's Ella Lombardini. It's a Finnish uh, violin player. And that was at the Gaukurin um, concert hall, great place. And uh, at the right, that's a good illustration of uh, the reaction of this lens in really strong, contrasty situations and, uh, and how the color rendering is around strong highlights. Works well, uh, very well controlled. Um, that's Breed at the Modern Art Museum um, in Reykjavik. Uh, it's um, it's a big warehouse that that has been transformed, and so as you can see with the three point five aperture, it's actually interesting because you you still have some you you do have some bokeh, some blurring of the foreground, but you can you still can have some detail on the first, on the closest public uh, with the with their iPhones taking pictures and. And of course, the main subject uh, is really well rendered, uh, a really nice lens in that sense. Going to lower light situation, higher contrast on the left, that's um, that's Gudrid Hansdottir. I don't know if I pronounced it well, but at uh, a nice concert hall, it's a ballroom, which is named Idno. Um, and you can see with this really strong backlight, uh, how you have those kind of, how the lights, 
uh, kind of bites uh, onto the subject. Um, that's the kind of flair you will get with this lens. Uh, it's really well controlled, but again, a really good uh, definition, really nice rendering, warm colors are are really there. Same thing on the right with that's Zoe at the Kex Hotel. Um, it's, um, it's a hotel where they have a bar where they have concerts uh, regularly and the previous years for the festival, you had the Kex Radio in Seattle that would come and broadcast live for the anecdote. But again, you see the skin tones, the way it renders the bouquet, uh, a really, really neat, uh, neat little lens for 135. Uh, here again on the left, um, that's Flut. It's, uh, it's rumored to go for the next Eurovision contest. Um, and that was at Gamlabio. It's a concert hall in the center of the city. Again, contrasty situations, how you have definition, a really soft bouquet. Um, yeah, overall, a very steady lens. And on the right, that's um, Thuis from Luxembourg, uh, again playing at the uh, Idno Ballroom. Uh, you can see how this lens is really strong at managing high contrast, no, no ghost images or... Uh, the hollow, the halos are pretty good. You, you actually, they feel natural, so you usually don't really see them unless you deconstruct the image. Um, and here again, talking about halo uh, on the right, that's uh, uh, at uh, Hura. It's uh, DJ Flugfell or Geimskip. Um, she does for a great set. Uh, it's kind of wild, and you can see on with the lights on. On top, um, the halo is actually adding something natural to the scene. And, and again, this soft bouquet, um, not too strong because of the 3.5 aperture, obviously, but a um, really natural response to all those colors. And on the left, that's uh, that's Lön at uh, Frikirkja. Um, this festival is great because you really have very different venues, and that's in a church near the lake. Um, and here you see this this halo is kind of doesn't really appear uh, around uh, the candles, but um, even the low lights, like in the background, old blue monochromatic, uh, come out, and, and the skin tones are even so. It's kind of yellow, which is actually the real uh, color during the festival, uh, during the the concert. Um, everything feels pretty organic with this lens. And then when you go really down in lower lights or harder situations like like for example concerts where everything's monochromatic because they only lit the, the musicians with blue or red or whatever going to black and white will increase your sensitivity in, in some ways and yeah you will re really get something very precise uh, on the left you can see it with when the focus is right obviously it's a manual focus lens but you will really have some strong detail uh, on this left picture, it's interesting. That's probably the most ghosting image I, I will have, and I I had during this trial uh, on top of his head. That's the kind of um, ghost image you will get. Um, very controlled. And on the right, um, it gives you a good idea how resistant this lens is to high contrast. With this, um, this this is Samper. It's a, an Irish band and playing at the Gaukurin, and. Even with very strong uh, contrast, you 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 keep it under control with this lens. Uh, again, um, it's very compact too, so uh, nobody actually really sees you, um, and that enables you to go in places where you wouldn't be able to go, either because it's too much equipment or because it actually disturbs everyone. Uh, so here, nobody sees you. It's really compact. It's not much more than a than a than a smartphone. A little bit more, but people don't really, uh, you're not annoying everyone. So you can really get close, as I did on the left picture, against Sumper. Or you can go in the dance pit, um, and that's uh, the right picture. That's Roixop, uh playing um, during the festival, dancing in the crowd. You, and a good example also of this smooth bouquet is, is really a nice old school rendering. And again, two last pictures, again Roixop this Swedish duo uh, playing a DJ set. Not It's not the group. And that was, again, at the Modern Art Museum in, in Reykjavik. Um, yeah, this 30, 135 millimeter is great for all those situations. You can get close. You can still have some detail from far away, uh, even in non-traditional uh, 
locations like I was at uh, on the left uh, I was in the, in the VIP space uh, looking from above or actually dancing with the rest uh, of, the, of, the, of the people it's a great lens a great lens good in almost any situation it's kind of old school in its rendering but I, I guess that gave you a few ideas of what it's able to to do with who says 135 millimeter on a rangefinder camera says basically a viewfinder which is not really adapted so canon came out with this 135 uh, equivalent viewfinder you could put on the flash uh, shoe hot shoe uh, which was compatible obviously with this lens and made you made it easier to to compose uh, using this longer focal range 